Hi everybody and welcome back to my booktube channel Books of Leo and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 fantasy books that I really really want to get to in 2021. Okay so these are some of the books um, a few I have on my iPad or I'm going to be reading on script so I don't have them physically but this is the pile of all the books I have physically that I still want to read. I've seen a lot of people upload their top 10 books they still want to read in 2021 videos and I was like oh my god that's very cool. The thing is however I uploaded a video with all the books I still wanted to read in 2020 like in the last few weeks of 2020 and I barely read any of them so a lot of those have just moved on to what I want to read in the new year. Um, um, so I decided to make this a fantasy themed video where I only talk about the fantasy books I really really want to read this year. I am making no promises or whatsoever about whether I will actually read these. <laughs> we know I'm just not good at TBRs and I don't like the pressure but these are just some books that are high on my priority list that I've been wanting to read for a long time or that I've already started in, stuff like that. So yeah let's just get into it. So the first book that is on this pile is Muse of Nightmares by Liani Taylor. I loved the first book which is Strange the Dreamer. It was at the time of reading it, it was like one of my favourites ever. It was just one of the best things I'd ever read at the time. I loved it so 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 much. It was like very near and dear to my heart. And then I never picked up this book. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why that keeps happening to me but it just does. I also feel like I don't remember enough of Strange the Dreamer to know what the sequel, like what is happening in the sequel which is also a struggle I have regularly in my life and on this channel reading books. Basically the first book was about Laszlo who has always believed in the city of Weep but the city has sort of been forgotten and nobody remembers it or knows what it was actually called. And then there's also these gods that live like in a palace floating above the city of Weep and Laszlo goes there as a scholar or something. Not entirely sure but a lot of magic and adventure is happening <laughs> in the first book. And I really, really love that. I also think Liani Taylor has such beautiful prose, very lyrical, uh, a little bit purple prose here and there, and just really wonderful. Amazing characters is also what I remember. And it was just a world that was so vivid. It was just really enjoyable to read. So I'm really hoping I finally get to the sequel in 2021. I'm also really hoping I can find a good summary of the first book somewhere online. <laughs> the next book is also a sequel, and that is This Covenant Break by Isabel Sterling. I read the first book in 2019. I think. I'm not entirely sure but that was These Witches Won't Burn and this is basically about a lesbian witch called Hannah and she's an elemental witch and she lives with her coven together. Some mystery is starting to happen in the first book and she has to work together with her ex-girlfriend who's also in her coven to stop this blood witch that they think might be on the hunt for them. That's basically the first book and in this book we follow her further on her adventures. I'm really excited to see where Hannah goes in this story and all the witchy and magic stuff that's going to happen. I just love witchy stories so if you know any books with witches in them, definitely let me know. I will probably read them at some point. Don't come to me with a discovery of witches though because I didn't like that. <laughs> no offence. Then we have Master of One, which I got in the last Fairy Loop box. I took the dust checker off because I really love the naked cover and the design it has. And it also has a really cute sprayed edges. It's a theme in this video that I don't know a lot about the books, but that's because I haven't read them because this is sort of a TBR obviously and also because I like to go into books without knowing like everything. I read the back of this in my fairy loot video as well and all I kind of remember and can gather is that this is a little bit of a crossover between fey stories and like heist magical stories such as like Six of Crows and then like fey stories such as Sarah J Maas's fey stories but maybe also The Cruel Prince that's also a fae story of course. I'm totally ready for that, like that is something I definitely want to read. Yeah it's fae and they're going on a heist and there's magical intrigue and it's quite a chunky fantasy. I think this is like over 600 pages, not entirely sure. It's 531, it's manageable. Um, it's just also a really pretty book, like it was signed the fairy loot edition, it has this gorgeous map at the beginning and yeah I'm just really excited to see if this is a book I will enjoy. 
Then the next fantasy I want to read in 2021 that I want to talk about is a graphic novel and it is called The Spire and it is made by Simon Spurrier, Jeff Stokely and Andre May. I'm just reading that off of my iPad because I don't know. I have really been getting into graphic novels and comics more in the last year and I wanted to try out some fantasy comics because I haven't read a lot of fantasy comics even though all like the regular fiction I read is almost all fantasy. Not all but like I read a lot of fantasy fantasy and these graphic novels have stunning covers like the art looks so beautiful so I was just like I need to check this out um, and they're on script so I was like yeah that's perfect I can read them on my iPad as far as I can see it kind of reminds me of Howl's Moving Castle because it's also like this pile of metal and like stone and garbage that is sort of like there's technology and stuff that's sort of alive or like that's what I gather from the synopsis is probably way off <laughs> if you've read it I'm so sorry and I don't think it's like as cutesy as Howl's Moving Castle so it's like a very bad comparison but that's just what it reminds me of like visually so what it also says here is that we follow uh, a commander of the city watch and he's tasked with sort of guarding the forgotten technology and everything in that radioactive desert that he lives in and then some grisly murders are committed and he has to find the killer before the new baroness of the spire is sworn in as a baroness so there's pressure there's murder there's mystery there's fantasy and Honestly, the illustrations look so beautiful. I can't wait to just stare at every page of this comic for like 20 minutes. I'm so ready. So yeah, this is definitely something I want to check out in 2021. Another book that I'm really excited to dive into in the new year is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. I was kind of doubting whether I wanted to get this because I've been hearing very, very mixed things about her first book, which is called The Binding, I think. Um, some people I know loved it and some people I know thought it was very very boring I'm not sure but this one is just so beautiful like when I saw this book I just kind of wanted it because it's so pretty all that I really know is that this is about an exclusive academy and that just sounds dark academia ish to me and all of the people in this academy are trained for the grand show which is an arcane and mysterious contest this just sounds like there's a magic school there's arcane things i always love like psychic arcane elements in books and it's just it looks really pretty and it sounds a bit dark academia and i'm ready for it so yeah <laughs> i hope it's good if you've read the binding or any other book by bridget collins I'd love to know whether you liked it, so let me know down below. <laughs> okay, another book that I really want to read this year, and I definitely think I will get to this one. It's one of the shortest fantasy books on my to-be-read list, which I love because a lot of fantasy I read is very thick and chunky and there's a lot happening. This is The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. All I know about this book is that there are a bunch of sisters, I think it's five sisters, and they were all kidnapped and branded with cursed markings and in that way trapped in a life they didn't want for themselves and they all have different abilities and things they're really good at so it says here Asta the protector, Violet the favorite, Tenzi the medic, Mello the fighter, Clementine the catalyst and basically one of the sisters accidentally kills a man and from that on they try to escape or find a new freedom in their life that's all I know really it also says on the back pursued by powerful forces both living and dead so maybe there'll be some ghosts. I'm not sure. I just love ghosts. Um, so yeah, this just sounds like a really interesting fantasy and I'm always curious to see um, sister dynamics in fantasy books. That's just something I really, really love. So yeah, can't wait to check this one out. Okay, the next book I would love to read in 2021 is a reread for me and that is Ninth House by Lee Dugo. I've been wanting to reread this book for a very long time, especially since the Dutch edition came out. It's really, really pretty. Um, in Dutch it's called Het Negende Huis, um, which is literally the same title. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I'm really curious to see if the translation is any good and I always want to support the Dutch book industry, so that's also why I bought a second copy in my mother language. I'm just really, really excited to be experiencing this story again. It's one of my favorite favorite stories. It's also dark academia and occult and there's also a little bit of a murder mystery in there. So if you're interested in elements like those, this is definitely something you should check out. And yeah, I'm hoping this reread will be just as good as the first time I read this book. Okay, another book that I really want to read in the new year is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. I'm planning to read this via audiobook. Um, I really love audiobooks. Like first I thought they weren't for me, but lately 
I've discovered them and it's just it's great. Last year I've read a lot of audiobooks or well I've listened to a lot of audiobooks and I'm planning to do the same this year. I read a lot of B. Jelly Clark's other books in 2020 and I really really enjoyed them. I listened to all of them on audiobook like I said. There's just something about the way P. Jelly Clark writes fantasy where he weaves humour and very witty characters together with more political and societal issues and themes which is just really cool to me and I love when that happens in fantasy when an author can critique a thing that is happening in the actual world through a fantasy world and still make it be a very entertaining and impactful wonderful story to read and consume. Those were a lot of words. What I basically just mean is that I really enjoy his writing and it says here that it's a dark fantasy historical novella which just sounds really good. It says it gives a supernatural twist to the Ku Klux Klan's reign of terror in America and it's basically about the resistance fighters that are fighting them and then there's also some supernatural fantasy elements to it. So this just sounds like a really really interesting story. I've got no clue what it will be like and there's nothing more that I know about this than what I just told you. Dark historical fantasy isn't a genre that I've read a lot. I have read a lot of historical books and I like historical fantasy as well but dark historical fantasy is new so that's really cool. I am planning on reading more historical books this year and more uh, and more historical fantasy as well because that's a genre that I really enjoy. So yeah, this one is definitely also on my list. Last but not least, I have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. <laughs> I've been trying to finish this book for such a long time. I'm just not able to do it so far. I'm not sure what it is with this book. <laughs> I started it in the summer of 2020 and I was loving it and I came pretty far actually like I'm literally halfway through um but it was just not a summer read like this is a very wintry story and it is set in winter so I put it aside I picked up something more summery and I was like I will pick this up again when it's winter and when it's cold outside and then I didn't <laughs> I just didn't um but it's still January and it's still a month full of cold weather so I should be able to pick it up now. I love Erin Morgenstern's writing. The first novel that I read from her was The Night Circus. I ate it up. I loved it so much. She writes such fever dreamish books. Like they're so vague and dreamy but really wonderful. And this was the same. It's really cool as far as I've read so far and it's about like this underground book society. There's a lot of magic happening but it was just like I felt like there wasn't a lot of plot <laughs> which like didn't bother me in her other books and it usually doesn't really bother me but it just didn't get me in the right place to really enjoy it and I don't want to not enjoy this book if that makes any sense so I'm hoping I get in the right mood to pick this up again in 2021 because I really want to finish this story because I did really love it even though I was like feeling I could love it more if I read it at a better time <laughs> So those were some of the fantasy books I really want to pick up in 2021. Definitely let me know in the comments down below what fantasy books you want to pick up in the new year. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!